there's times where I look up in the sky and I, you know, I, I just simply say thank you for um, changing my life. You never make the climb alone. Someone helps you up that mountain. Destination tethered to the point of origin. For Jamel Herring, it was Wilson Avenue, Medford, Long Island. I would go directly across the street, and that's where I, I met my, my best friend, which is Stephen Brown, at the age of um, six, seven years old. Like two peas in a pod. Like one, they were like brothers. He was a year older than me, of course, but it was like we were on the same mindset. And yeah, we, we, we were in two different grades and everything like that, but we, you know, we were into the same things and we did basically everything together as brothers. Still, as they came of age, one difference became apparent. Stefan knew where he was headed. When he graduated from high school, the decision he made was to literally go into the Marine Corps, which actually surprised me because no one in our area or you know, that I really knew that like that was actually a Marine. A year later, Stefan returned as a United States Marine. Jamel, a high school senior, had neither a goal nor a plan. I didn't pretty much know what direction I was going to go to after high school, but I knew I didn't want to stay in Long Island. So he reached out to me and was saying, you know, there's nothing here for you to do. Why don't you join as well when you graduate high school? Jamel enlisted shortly thereafter and was stationed in Camp Lejeune, not a year removed from graduation, when he got the call. Stefan had lung cancer. He was a type, he didn't like for others to feel bad for him or worry. So I'll only get like, you know, the small details of what's going on. So I, I'm thinking, okay, okay, he sounds all right. And you know, he's, he's gonna be just fine. If stoicism's a warrior's virtue, then Lance Corporal Stephen Brown died a hero. December 12th, 2004, at Bethesda Naval Hospital. He was 20. I had to call Jamel when Stephen passed. Jamel said, he said he was fine. I said, I know he's what he said, Jamel, but he wasn't. She called me and she just said he was gone. And she just kept crying. And, and, and it messed me up because there was no purpose, purpose for me. Because if, if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be a Marine. I looked up to him for guidance. And I, when I had lost him, it just ruined me. Two months after Stephen's passing, Jamel was deployed to the battle-scarred city of Fallujah, Iraq. When he was gone, it was like, okay, now it's time. I got to figure things out on my own. This is one of those things like, okay, what are you going to do? Are you going to allow things to break you? Guys that are with you today, and they're not with you tomorrow when you wake up. And you start questioning, like, what makes me so special that I'm here today, and they're not? Some days it was just like, there was nothing to look forward to at the time. Okay, whatever, whatever happens, happens, you know, it's war. That mindset didn't change until late in his second tour. It was 2007 when he realized there was hope. I was expecting my oldest, my first son to be born. I can't be selfish here. I, I have someone actually, you know, who, who's gonna depend on me, who's gonna need me. I don't want my son to grow up without a father. That was my um, main key to, to getting me through those days. By the time Jamel returned to the States, he had a new sense of purpose and a new son. I named my first son Stephen. When I told him all the great stories about Stephen Brown, you know, my son was like, okay, I, 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 now I understand why, Dad. Thank, you know, and, and so he, he appreciates his name. You honor the dead by celebrating the living. Stephen didn't merely set Jamel's course, he remains with him. From Iraq, to the ring, to the world title. All the way up that mountain. I can't tell you any individual around me growing up that believed in me and, and motivated and pushed me the way he did. And I knew if he was here, he would be proud because, you know, he's smiling, looking down on me, and he's proud today.